She was the poster child for the slasher movement of the 70s and 80s. But how exactly did Jamie Lee Curtis become the undisputed Queen of Scream? It's time to submit our first entry into Arrow in the Head's Horror Hall of Fame. It's hard to imagine a time when Curtis wasn't in the public consciousness, but every success story has its origins, and for Curtis, it begins and ends in Hollywood. She was the daughter of Tony Curtis and Janet Lee, the latter of which was no stranger to screaming on screen. Initially studying law, she would soon follow in her parents' footsteps and take a stab at acting. Supporting roles in a slew of TV shows later, she would land the role of a lifetime in a very first feature film after catching the eye of a man named John Carpenter. We picked a scene in the script and she read it and she had a, I don't know, I had a quality about her. There was an innocence and yet a strength going on in there and I really liked it. That kind of part, obviously, it was not what I was doing. I was doing two lines here and there. All I remember about Halloween was that it was a script where every single page had the name Laurie on it. Laurie Strode's fate might seem obvious now, but for audiences watching the film for the first time, there was never any certainty whether a character would make it through to the end or not. And it was Curtis's ability to show both strength and vulnerability that made her character feel so relatable. You know, it was so fast and furious. I really just don't think anybody, it was there he was and it was like, okay, let's do this. Yeah, I didn't have to tell Jamie too much. Uh, she, knew what, she knew what to do. The closet scene in particular really does feel like a woman going through a traumatic event, as opposed to watching just another damsel in distress. Like Ripley, Sarah Connor, or Princess Leia, Laurie Strode was the type of feisty female character Hollywood only serves up once in a generation. A string of horror hits would follow in the wake of Halloween's success, including Prom Night, where she would bag her first big paycheck. They're too old for games, but someone still wants to play. Prom Night. If you're not back by midnight, you won't be coming home. The Fog, which would see her re-team with Carpenter, albeit in a smaller role, and Terror Train, a by-the-number slasher which the film's own producer admitted was an attempt at capitalizing on Halloween's success. One night I was sleeping and I woke up next to my girlfriend and I said, what if I put Halloween on a train? And she said, that's terrible. Then there was the raucous Ozploitation classic, Road Games. Aren't you kind of young to be hitchhiking out here all by yourself? Aren't you kind of old to be picking me up? Securing Curtis in the lead role may have been a major coup for Aussie filmmakers at the time, but it was somewhat tarnished by the fact she'd been brought in to replace an already cast Australian actress. Somebody asked her the question, what is it like putting Australians out of work? I knew there was hostility about being token American, let alone the fact that I had taken another person's job. As the decades wore on, Curtis began to distance herself from the horror genre, as she proved herself an acting all-rounder, one who was particularly adept at comedy. Oh my God! She would go on to win a Golden Globe for her role in Trading Places, along with a memorable turn in True Lies. Now I'll lie on the bed and close your eyes. But despite her broad career and vast array of characters, Laurie Strode will forever be her legacy. Where would I be without Michael Myers? You know what I'm saying? She would go on to play the character another four times, first in 1981's Halloween 2, and then again 17 years later during the slasher rebirth of the 90s, playing a middle-aged Laurie in Halloween H2O. You don't think that after all this time he, he'd, he'd still be coming after you, do you? He sat in a sanitarium for 15 years waiting for me. One rainy night he decides to go trick-or-treating. By the time Halloween Resurrection hit screens in 2002, it seemed as if the character may have finally reached the end of the road. After being shamelessly killed off in the first act, I'll see you in hell. It would take another 15 years before writers Danny McBride and David Gordon Green would breathe new life back into the Dead franchise, not only wooing back Curtis and Carpenter, but seemingly erasing the events of the previous seven sequels. And that's not even if you count the Rob Zombie remakes, which we definitely don't. I don't want to say, hey, you guys don't exist. I want to say, we were there the whole way through with every one of you. Um, 
and and you don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> the 2018 version of Strode was a PTSD-riddled, self-medicating grandmother, which Curtis imbued with her own inner demons. I had been nursing a secret Vicodin addiction for a very long time, over 10 years. And I talk to people all day long about addiction because if it's a secret, it will kill you. If it's not a secret, you may be able to save your own life. The film would earn both critical and commercial praise, becoming the highest grossing film in the franchise and the most successful slasher film of all time, breaking a record previously held by Scream. Hopefully, it, it resolves with a woman being able to take back the narrative of her life um, away from her perpetrator. With Curtis now firmly back in the spotlight and two more Halloween sequels on the way, it's a safe bet that if Laurie's fate is to be bumped off, again, at least this time we know our favourite Scream Queen will be going out on her terms. <laughs>